In this video, we're learning about osmosis. So we'll cover what water potential means, what osmosis is, and how osmosis affects animal and plant cells. Let's begin by understanding what water potential means. We use this term, water potential, which is often represented by the Greek letter psi to describe the pressure that water molecules in a solution exert on a membrane or on the container that they're in. When we talk about a solution, we're referring to a mixture where a solute is dissolved in a solvent. As an example, if we grab a beaker of water and dissolve some glucose in it, the glucose is the solute and the water is the solvent. Importantly though, these solute and solvent particles are constantly moving around, which exerts pressure on their container. In our example here, the container is a beaker, but in our cells, the container would be the cell membrane. And importantly, it's specifically the pressure exerted by water molecules in the solution we refer to as water potential. And because it's a type of pressure, it's measured in kilopascals, or KPA for short. Here's the interesting part though. Pure water, which is only made of water molecules, actually has a water potential of zero kilopascals. And if we add solutes to it, the water potential decreases to minus 100 kilopascals. Or in other words, it becomes more negative. And if we add even more solute, so there's lots of solute dissolved in the solvent, the water potential of the solution becomes even more negative and decreases to minus 200 kilopascals. So if you think about this all together, a high water potential, closer to zero kPa, means there's a relatively high concentration of water and a relatively low concentration of solute. But a low water potential, indicates a relatively low concentration of water and a relatively high concentration of solute. Next, let's talk about what osmosis is. We use the word osmosis to describe the diffusion of water across a partially permeable membrane from an area of higher water potential to an area of lower water potential. And we need to be really careful here to use the term water potential rather than water concentration. If we look at this diagram, we can see some partially permeable membranes, which are selective barriers that let some molecules through but not others. And in this case, these water molecules are small enough to pass through the membranes, but the solute molecules are too large to pass through. Let's say we've got the same water potentials as we did for our beakers last time, but this time they're all in this one container, just separated by the partially permeable membranes. Water moves down a water potential gradient from the section on the left with the highest water potential over to the sections on the right with lower water potentials. This keeps happening until equilibrium is reached, meaning the water potential is approximately equal throughout the container and so there's no net movement of water. Finally, let's explore how osmosis affects animal and plant cells. When cells, like this red blood cell, are placed in solutions with different water potentials to the cell itself, water can move in or out of the cell by osmosis, and different solutions have different effects on the cells. Starting with hypertonic solutions, these are those that have a higher water potential than the cell. When an animal cell like this one is placed in a hypertonic solution, water enters the cell by osmosis from an area of high water potential in the solution to an area of lower water potential in the cell. This causes the animal cell to swell and possibly burst if too much water enters into it. If we did the same thing with this plant cell, however, because the plant cell has a sturdy cell wall, which the animal cell didn't have, this prevents the cell from bursting, and instead, the water just presses the cell membrane against the cell wall and causes the cell to become turgid, which just means it's firm. Moving on to isotonic solutions, these have the same water potential as the cell which means for both animal and plant cells, there's no net movement of water. As a result, both animal and plant cells maintain their size and shape when put into isotonic solutions. Finally then, we have hypertonic solutions, which have a lower water potential than the cell. So if we place this animal cell in a hypertonic solution, water exits the cell by osmosis from an area of higher water potential inside the cell to an area of lower water potential outside the cell, and this causes the animal cell to shrink. If we did the same thing with this plant cell, water still leaves the cell, 
but this time the cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall, and as a result, the plant cell becomes plasmalized. And when this happens to lots of cells in a plant, the tissues become flaccid. And this is exactly what makes a plant wilt when it doesn't have enough water. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.